Having access to clean drinking water in an emergency is paramount. And if you don't have a well or live right next to a river, you're only dependent on the water systems that your local municipality has in place. And if those go down, what will you do? Now that's where an atmospheric water generator like the Solaris A10 you see right here will come into play. Because this is not a water supply, this is not water storage, this is a water source. This creates water out of thin air that you can then drink because it sterilizes and purifies the water so that it's potable right out of the spout. And if it's a little noisy right now, it's because this thing is on and working right this second to generate additional water. And as you can see right here, it's already got some in the tank ready to go. So, what's the purpose of an atmospheric water generator? Well, it allows you to have water anywhere you are. It could be in an apartment, it could be in an RV or a trailer, you could be at a bug out location. As long as you have power and the right conditions are met, you can generate water wherever, which is a huge benefit in any emergency scenario. And no, this is not just a dehumidifier, this is purpose built to give you clean, safe drinking water. There is a difference and we'll discuss that here a little bit later. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how this works, what it's capable of, what conditions are required for it to work properly and efficiently, and whether or not it's worth the cost, because we will be talking about that later on. It is not inexpensive. However, I will have links down in the description as well as in the pinned comment with a discount code in case you find yourself interested in such a device. First off though, how does it work? This video is brought to you by Midway USA, who has just about everything you need when it comes to preparedness. So a big thanks to Midway USA for making projects like this possible. So what is an atmospheric water generator and how does it work? Well, in the case of the Solaris A10, what it does is it pulls air in through an air filter system, which as a secondary benefit actually purifies the air in the room that you're using it in. And then it combines refrigeration with a graphene interface material to cool down the water vapor in the air and condense it into liquid water, which is then held in a 3.8 liter holding tank. And a lot of you are gonna say, you mean just like a dehumidifier? Well, no, because there's a little bit more to it than thereafter. For example, the 3.8 liter water holding tank actually has a UV sterilization lamp, which kills pathogens and microorganisms. And it's pretty easy to demonstrate the difference of what that does compared to a dehumidifier that doesn't have one. Here is the water storage tank from the A10. And I've been using it for two months straight without cleaning it once. And you can see that it's still relatively clean. And there's that UV sterilization lamp that's inside of the water tank. And it does a good job of maintaining a clean environment for the water. Now in comparison, here's my dehumidifier's water reservoir, which is not purpose built to contain potable water. It's only made for wastewater that it pulls from the air. And as you can see, without a UV sterilization lamp or proper maintenance, it can grow quite a bit of stuff, including housing things like Legionnaire's disease. So in order to drink this, you would have to decontaminate it and filter it, and even then, I'm not sure I would want to. Now, after the water is generated and held in the water holding tank, it's pumped through a multi-filtration system, including a post-activated carbon filter, an ultra-filtration filter, and a carbon block filter, and then it's sent to the drinking water tank, which is 1.2 liters, and kept cold. As you can see right here, the ambient temperature right now is 26 degrees Celsius, but the drinking water tank is actually at 12 degrees Celsius. So you got cool water on tap. And this system gives you a total of five liters of water on hand once it's full. And that's more than a gallon, which is pretty good considering it can double that in a 24 hour period with the right conditions. Using the Solaris Water Gen A10 is very simple. Once you have it plugged in, you just go ahead and hit the power button right here. Everything will turn on. It tells you what the ambient temperature is. It tells you what the temperature inside of the drinking tank is. And then it also tells you what the percentage of humidity is in your area. You have a light here that indicates whether or not it's making water, which currently it is. You also have indicator lights over here. One tells you if you need to replace your air filter. One tells you if you need to replace your water filter. And then the dispense button is right here on the front. And all you do is hold your glass under the dispenser, hit the button, and it'll keep dispensing until the water tank runs out. So in order to stop it from dispensing, you'll just hit it again, and there you are. There are other indicator lights that will come on here on the main dash that will tell you things like whether or not the UV lamp is working for sterilization, whether or not there is additional water being made currently, and those things will come on and off based on whatever the machine is producing at the time.
So I've been using this unit daily now for two months without a single issue. As long as you have a power bank or some type of solar setup, you can easily use it outside as long as it's within its condition parameters. So what are those conditional requirements in order for this machine to operate efficiently and create water? It has to operate within 59 degrees Fahrenheit and 100 degrees Fahrenheit, whether or not you're inside or outside. And luckily most buildings on the inside are gonna be within that temperature range, but sometimes using it outside won't work well. And as for humidity, it needs to be between 35% and 90% humidity. So those are considerations to make before you decide you need a unit like this to make sure that where you're going to be using it are gonna meet those conditional requirements. Now, what are the capabilities and specs of this unit? Well, like I said, I use it every day because it's usually in my workshop where I don't have running water. So now I have access to drinking water on tap, basically, wherever I am. And this is a 40 ounce stainless steel container that I use to drink most of the water I have throughout the day. And one drinking tank, which is 1.2 liters, AKA almost 40 ounces, fills this container all the way up to the brim. So it works out really well for me. But this unit can produce up to 10 liters of water per day, which equates to 2.64 gallons. So it can produce quite a bit of water. Now it's rated to use 245 watts, but it usually runs at about 200 watts, or at least that's what I've found. Right now, the Solaris is in water generating mode. So water making is currently on. You can see that here with this symbol as well. And the unit has been fully emptied. And this is while I'm timing it to see how quickly I can get a full tank of potable water with this current humidity level. Now, this is also a good time to show you how much power consumption I'm getting with this particular unit. Like I said, it's advertised at 230 watts, but I have it hooked up to my EcoFlow power station down here. And you can see that it bounces around between 165 and a little over 200 watts. So it does have a lot of fluctuation, but it never quite reaches that 230 watt point that it advertises. So efficiency wise, this unit is very energy efficient in comparison to something like my dehumidifier, which I'll show you how much energy that uses here in just a second. Now let's see how much power consumption my dehumidifier uses. So go ahead, turn that on. And get it going. And you can see here, it's still going up. And generally it will float around 500 watts. So you can see that there's quite a big difference in how much power the A10 uses from Solaris versus a standard dehumidifier. Now the filters on the unit do have a lifespan. The minimum is six months. So depending on your environment, depending on the air quality and everything else, it could last at least six months, but it also has a maximum amount of 12 months on the filter life. And that's so that you have to change them annually just to make sure the water is actually safe to drink. Now, the time to fill the tank is also based on environmental conditions, how much humidity there is, quality of the air, the temperature, everything else, right? So what I found is that even at around 45% humidity, which is not ideal, being over 50% would be the best for the system to be more efficient. But even at that range, it took about eight hours or so to fill the entire drinking tank and to get additional water in the water tank. And like I said, the system is rated to produce up to 10 liters within a 24 hour period, but that can all change based on environmental conditions. But I haven't ever found myself in a situation using it casually on a daily basis where I haven't been able to fill up my water bottle whenever I wanted to. So that's something for you to consider. And I live in North Dakota. Now I haven't had to clean the tank once yet, but you're supposed to clean the 3.2 liter water holding tank on the back of the unit once a month. All right, so now that you know about the capabilities of the unit, the power consumption, the filter life, how much it can produce and everything else, especially the conditional requirements, is it worth the cost? All right, so now you know how this unit works, you know what it's capable of, and you know what the environmental condition requirements are for it to work efficiently. But how much does it cost? Well, full disclosure, Solaris sent this unit to me free of charge upon my request. I reached out to them and thought that this was an innovative product that could be relevant to preparedness. And I asked if I could get a unit in order to evaluate it to determine whether or not it might be worth it for some of us here in this community. And so far, my personal determination is that it is highly valuable, but it is expensive. This unit, the 110 volt version for the USA, which is probably the one you'd be looking at, is $1,690.
And that doesn't include the $99 shipping or tax. So, does it cost a lot? Yes, it does. Is it worth it? Well, that's something that you have to determine. And for me, all I can give you is my personal experience. I've been using this unit every single day for the last two months that I've had it. I did not have running water in my workshop, but now I have access to drinking water that's cold anytime I want it. And it's actually helped me drink more water, and it is excellent as an emergency water source as well. So if you're going to use it every day like I do, and you know in an emergency it will be able to provide you with water where you might not otherwise have access to water, that could be worth the cost, especially if you live in an apartment or somewhere where you don't have any other water source than what is attached to the grid. In case the systems go down or something becomes contaminated or whatever else it is, you'll still have water, whereas many will not. Another thing to consider is that this particular system is still less expensive than a lot of my other preparedness investments, such as night vision or some of my rifle setups or a lot of other things that I'm much less likely to use in an emergency than safe drinking water. So water is really important for preparedness. And yes, this is expensive, but it makes sure that you will live for more than three days in an emergency as long as you can provide it with power. And with its low power consumption, as long as you have some sort of power bank or a solar setup or even a gas generator, this thing can keep cranking out water as long as you meet those environmental conditions. So, if you use my link in the description as well as in the pinned comment, and you use the code MAGICPREPPER, one word, you will save $150 off the price of the purchase, which is quite a bit, and actually fully covers a replacement pack of filters. So if you wanted to buy additional water filters and air filters, it comes in one pack for $150, so my discount code would cover that if that's something you're interested in. And then if you're not sure if your environment is good for a system like this, Solaris actually sells a humidity and temperature meter, which will give you an idea of whether or not this would work for you. It's only 10 bucks, but if you get it and it will work for you and you want to get the unit, they'll apply a $10 credit to the cost of the unit thereafter. So there are ways to try to determine whether or not this will be worth it for you, whether or not it will work for you, and there are some ways to save money like using my discount code. But like I said, this is expensive. I'm not unaware of that. But this is what a lot of people in the preparedness community have talked about for quite some time. A way to generate water from the air using solar or some sort of off-grid power source that doesn't rely on having a well pump or some sort of major water source like a river in order to provide you with safe, clean, potable drinking water anytime you need it. And up to over two gallons per day. So, so far, I have had a great experience with the Solaris A10. I think it would serve you well if you find it something that you could find useful. And especially if you have a preparedness group or a mutual assistance group, maybe you're part of a church or something like that, and you're able to pool together some funds and purchase a unit like this, you at least know that in an emergency where you can provide some level of power, and this only needs 200 watts, so it's really not too bad, you will have drinking water accessible to you pretty much anywhere as long as there's a little bit of humidity, right? So let me know if you have questions down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them for you. I'm not an expert on how these machines work, but I have been using it for quite a while so I can give you my personal feedback. And when it comes to setting up the system and everything else, it comes with really detailed instructions. It's very basic. It's basically plug and play in all honesty. And uh, I don't think you would find it hard to use at all. Anything else you need from me, you can go to magicprepper.com. And besides that, that's going to be it for Magic Prepper.